So we're delighted today to have the expertise of three ACYPL alumni who will provide some clarity into what we should expect this year and perhaps further down the line. Our three panelists are the Executive Vice President of Public Affairs and Policy at the U.S. Travel Association, Ms. Tori Barnes, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association, Mr. Michael Jacobson, and the Vice President of Global Affairs at American Airlines, Mr. Steve Newman. You know, tra the travel industry was the hardest hit industry of, um, of all of the pandemic, representing unfortunately 39% of all jobs lost as a result of the pandemic uh, in the leisure and hospitality sectors. Um, and that's resulted in $530 billion in cumulative loss for the U.S. travel economy um, through January 2021. Uh, additionally, uh, that's a, a loss in $68.6 billion in local, state, and federal tax revenue. Yes. Um, from the beginning of the pandemic, we've been deemed as an essential industry. Uh, and if you look at the populations of people staying in our hotels, some of our key demographics or key populations of people staying right now are National Guard members that have been mobilized throughout the state to either deal with the pandemic response or right now with, with vaccination um, pop-ups that have happened throughout the state. Some of our hotels are even the site of their county health department um, vaccination clinics but also traveling medical staff. And then even in some cases, COVID positive, uh, people that have been diagnosed as COVID positive, but who might live at a multi-generational home and might not want to go home and potentially expose their parents or grandparents uh, who are older and more vulnerable to the virus. So the overall state and health of the economy will significantly suffer if we don't bring travel back. I mean, right now we're looking at that 2025 time horizon. Um, as, as Michael noted, um, in some areas that could be even more prolonged if we don't do things that we can to stabilize the economy and travel was one in 10 jobs pre-pandemic so you know we have a real opportunity to shorten that recovery time period as well yeah well, let me start on the vaccine it's a you know huge priority for the leadership of the company to try and make sure that our team members have um, easy and expedited and efficient access um, to, to uh, the vaccine and we are you know, just devoting a tremendous amount of time and resources on the government affairs side, on the um, on our people and benefits side, and otherwise to try and, and enhance just that. Fields. We're seeing a lot of people because of they feel stir crazy planning staycations or planning not necessarily staycations in Chicago, but instead of necessarily getting on a plane, they might get in their car and drive 60 miles down the road and explore their own backyard. And I think you'll start to see a lot more of that kind of. Uh, more regional approach to traveling as well of, oh, you know what? I've, I've never seen that town that's two hours from me. Maybe it, it is worth driving in the short term. And, and like I said, the biggest barrier is, of course, the cost. And that certainly is far less a barrier today than it was a year ago. Here, there are really some these great deals right now. Um, and, and I think, you know, if you look, you know, about a year out, there's still actually some really good deals. So, you know, I think to the extent that, that folks feel ready, um, and as you, as we've noted, the sort of layered approach to health and safety that the industry's taken, um, you know, it is, it is something that, that's great that we have a lot of data that can, can make you understand, you know, how happy you really are when you plan planning that trip. Um, I know as someone who just recently, um, you know, took a few trips, uh, it really does make you feel alive and excited and happy, and you can do it in a confident way if you if you follow all the health and safety guidance that's out there. 